What is popping, YouTube? Bringing you five mustache players that you need to be stashing here in May. Starting off with player number one, it's going to be Darnell Mooney. And it's crazy to me that Darnell Mooney has kind of gotten into that stash territory, but that is where we are with Darnell Mooney. Clear wide receiver two on the Atlanta Falcons, wide receiver 82 on keep trade cut, overall player 215. And the thing with Darnell Mooney is he is the wide receiver two on the Atlanta Falcons. And yes, the Atlanta Falcons have Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts. Drake London. But we have seen that in previous offenses with Kirk Cousins, that these second wide receiver options tend to have a ton of fantasy football value, whether it has been Jordan Addison, whether it has been KJ Osborne. So when I'm looking at Darnell Mooney, who is still only 26 years old, 5'11, 177, his value feels a little deflated compared to where it should typically be. Let us not forget that Darnell Mooney has played in one of the worst offenses in the NFL over the last two seasons, three seasons, maybe his whole entire NFL career, but still in 2021, put up wide receiver 27 point per game numbers with 12.9 fantasy points per game. Now the last two years in 2022, 2023, 8.5, 5.3, so not good whatsoever, but we have seen Darnell Mooney be able to command targets. So in an offense that we assume is going to be better under Kirk Cousins with no Arthur Smith, absolutely love taking the shot, adding Darnell Mooney as a lower end bench stash to my roster. Now I understand that if there's people like me out there in your leagues, there's a good chance He's not on waiver wires. You guys play in deeper leagues. I totally understand that, but definitely worth going to try to trade for. Definitely worth the current stash. My second stash that you should be stashing is Damian Pierce. And don't get me wrong. Damian Pierce, he was the poster child of getting that fourth round draft capital and producing as a rookie running back. See him in the preseason, then see him in the regular season, be able to put up 12.8 fantasy points per game numbers, which was RB20. He was a back end RB2. Then to see in 2023, only 5.9 fantasy points per game, RB52, and kind of get beat out by the Jag. That was Devin Singletary. Now in an offense with CJ Stroud, that's scoring so many points and being in the red zone, you would have thought that that was going to be a great opportunity for Damian Pierce to get continue the breakout. Not the case. Now, the Houston Texans do bring in Joe Mixon, so it doesn't mean that all of a sudden Damian Pierce is back to being bell cow status. No, he is the clear RB2 in this backfield. In certain situations, I think there is upside to be had, and I think the Houston Texans are going to be a top five, top six offense this year with Stefan Diggs, with Nico Collins, with Tank Dell, with Dalton Schultz, and of course, with CJ Stroud behind me. So I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities for these running backs, and Joe Mixon, as much as he has been durable, he is getting up there in H. So I do think the shot on Damian Pierce to take here as a high upside stash, sign me up. I think the value, like I said, on keep trade cut, but also I know the metrics weren't there this last year. We don't love investing running backs, but he's still in that rookie contract deal. We did see the explosion. I do think if Damian Pierce were to get another shot in this amazing offense, it could definitely have some weeks for you. So definitely worth the stash. My third player you should be stashing is going to be Mr. Three-Legged Greg Dolchich, and he makes every stash video for me. I think I might be the biggest Greg Dolchich fan on YouTube, 6'4", 243, third round pick out of UOCLA, 24 years old, and in his rookie season, 8.6 fantasy points per game, was the tight end 17. And the thing with Greg Dolchers is he was putting up incredible rookie year numbers, then in 2023, ended up getting hurt. So he got hurt in his rookie season, got hurt last season, so he only played in two games, four targets, three receptions, like I said, 2.8 fantasy points, not great at all. But we did see Adam Trotman get signed last year, definitely have a little bit of fantasy football relevance. Now we come into this year, we got no Russell Wilson, we got rookie Bo Nix in the fold and rookie quarterbacks absolutely love to use their tight ends and the other impact is that Greg Dolchers might be sliding into like the second best option in this receiving game depending on how you view Greg Dolchers versus Marvin Mims but you got Cortland Sutton Marvin Mims Greg Dolchers someone's gonna have to catch passes in this offense and that to me is why I think it's going to be Greg Dolchers in this offense so I'm definitely trying to stash him everywhere especially on keep trade cut where he is the tight end 23 overall player 216 so like I said some of these guys if you're playing in deeper leagues you might have to go try to trade for him trade a late third, trade an early fourth, but I definitely think they are going to be worth the stash. The next stash player that we're going to be talking about is Michael Wilson Jr. And Michael Wilson Jr. was the clear wide receiver one on the Arizona Cardinals before they drafted Marvin Harrison Jr., which then pushed him down to the wide receiver too. And then you've got Zay Jones who ends up signing into this offense. And I think a lot of people are a little bit nervous about Michael Wilson Jr. right now. And that's why he's falling all the way to wide receiver 71, overall player 186 over on keep trade cut. Now, Michael Wilson definitely started to have some flashes last season. 8.8 fantasy points per game was the wide receiver 57. If we take a look in his game logs, all redraft season, I was super hype about my
Michael Wilson because he really started to turn it on when we're looking at week four. Had 26 fantasy points per game in week three, 10.6 fantasy points. And then even to end the season, week 17 had 15 and week 18 had 15 as well. Now, I didn't think Michael Wilson was like a clear alpha level wide receiver coming out of the University of Stanford, but he did get third round draft capital. And now going into year two, not only do we add Marvin Harrison Jr., who is a great prospect, but we also add Zay Jones to kind of do the extend the field down the field type routes. And I hear you, Michael Wilson Jr. definitely excelled at going long, but I think when we're looking at the profile of Michael Wilson Jr., profiles a lot more kind of closer to the line of scrimmage, running a ton of slants, running a ton of curls, as he is a pretty decent sized wide receiver at 6'1", 216. So I think he's a good wide receiver too. I don't necessarily like, I think the upside is there to be a wide receiver one, but we're not asking to get him as a wide receiver one with the prices at wide receiver 71. So I'm definitely willing to take a shot. Like I said, you're, he might be on the back end of someone's roster, especially after everything that we saw last year. But I mean, he's behind guys like Luke McCaffrey, Josh Palmer in like ahead of Gabe Davis, Curtis Samuel, Pop Douglas. I think he is pretty appropriately ranked. So go see if you can go get some Michael Wilson. Go see if he's someone that you could potentially get to stash. Absolutely love some Michael Wilson. We're going to go to the next guy and it's going to be Tucker Craft. And I think Tucker Craft's another guy that has really started to fall down the dynasty rankings purely because of the conversation of you got a lot of good weapons here. You got Jaden Reed, you got Wicks, you got Christian Watson, but then you also got Luke Musgrave. And then you add in Josh Jacobs to this overall offense. Now hear me out. Tight end 22. So he's right there alongside my man, Greg Dolchich. And I love both of these guys. Tucker Craft, when he was playing with Luke Musgrave, was primarily the blocking tight end. Was drafted, of course, in the third round out of South Dakota State this last year. But when he was asked to take over for Luke Musgrave towards the back end of the season, in week 14, 10 fantasy points. In week 15, 15 fantasy points. In week 16, 10 fantasy points. Week 17, 10 fantasy points. Like, he had a nice little run of fantasy football output that really started to give me life in seeing that Tucker Craft, I know he was used primarily as that blocking tight end. When we're looking at him going forward, I think he can definitely be more of this. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez, where Aaron Hernandez was more of the receiving tight, tight end coming out, and Rob Gronkowski was the inline blocker, but all of a sudden, they figured out how to use both of those guys. Both could be really dominant tight ends, and I think you got two great young tight ends in Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft, but Tucker Craft is less valuable at this current point on the open market, so go give me some Tucker Craft as a stash, especially if you're playing in some type of tight end premium league. If even you're just trying to take a late round shot on tight end because you've stacked your roster with running backs, quarterbacks, wide receivers, depending on your format. Absolutely love some Tucker Craft as a stash. And my final stash that I'll throw out towards you, you know, we were going to give you five. We ended up giving you six because that's the type of guy I am giving you that bonus one. It's going to be Jalen McMillan, who gets drafted round three, pick 28 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers out of the University of Washington. And honestly, if you were asking me between after Romo Dunze, who the top wide receiver was in the Washington offense, it was hard for me to say between McMillan and Polk. I really like the landing spot for McMillan. Not only do we have Mike Evans, who signs an extension long term, but we do have Chris Godwin who is going to be playing on the last year of his deal coming into this season. And so that could open up the opportunity for the wide receiver two spot in Tampa Bay to be open to a guy like Jalen McMillan, who did get this round three draft capital. And the other part that I think is really interesting is as much as Chris Godwin has kind of been a man of durability besides that ACL tear, Mike Evans has also been pretty durable, but he also has been getting up there in age and those hamstrings have been causing him issues year after year after year. Now I have Mike Evans on plenty of dynasty rosters, so I'm not wishing him any ill will. But what I am saying is that if I do have Mike Evans, I feel like I need to stash some Jalen McMillan because Baker Mayfield liked to throw the ball on and that is Jalen McMillan's specialty. So absolutely go try to target some Jalen McMillan because as a college prospect, super great 447 40 yard dash time, 98.7% speed score was in the 68th percentile, lands with a team that likes to throw the ball. Give me some Jalen McMillan. I think the cost to acquisition of him being wide receiver 76 and whoever probably drafted him, someone probably drafted him in the third round of your rookie drafts. So this is probably another guy. Some of these guys you're going to have to trade for. A stash is a stash. Doesn't mean you're just getting him off the waiver wire, but I still think Jalen McMillan could be worthy of a guy deeper down your bench that has a ton of upside going into this NFL season. So if you like Dynasty Fantasy Football, if you like us kind of deep diving into some guys that you probably don't get to talk about a lot because we're not just talking about the studs here today, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We're going to be putting out some more Dynasty content through the rest of May. So appreciate you guys so much. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.